On this week's Carrier Wrap, we speak with Gunter Udendorfer, CEO of Technology at Sprint, to discuss the carrier's three-channel carrier aggregation work in Chicago with network and device partner Samsung. All right, well, uh, today we are joined by uh, Gunther Odendorfer uh, from Sprint to talk a bit about what's happening in their new uh, uh, three-channel carrier aggregation news. So, hey, Gunther, thanks for joining us again. We appreciate it. Yeah, hello. Um, very good to talk with you again, Dan. I'm here together with my friends from Samsung here as well. How you doing? And we are here in Social Fields in Chicago to, um, because we have a really important day for our network. We have brought the next step of our LTE Plus development. And what we're doing uh, today is we have, together with Samsung, rolled out on 500 base stations in Chicago, three carrier aggregation. And here in Soldiers Field, we have now, with devices from Samsung, demonstrated the capabilities. Yes. So we did a, a demonstration today with 4K streaming video over Galaxy S7. Um, and you can kind of see in the background behind us here, we did a uh, free speed dial, if you will, again, over three different devices, all of them S7. Uh, we had a single carrier S7. Uh, we had a two carrier carrier aggregation demonstration as well, which is the dial and then on the right. Uh, it's a little out of focus, but we did a 3CA demo again over live devices over the production network and saw speeds reaching up to 204 megabits per second. So it was a great day for, for Sprint and for Samsung. Very interesting. And I guess for those who don't know much about carrier aggregation, this three channel is combining three 20 megahertz 2.5 gigahertz bands into a single 60 uh, megahertz uh, channel, basically, right? Exactly, that's what we do. We use our 2.5 spectrum, we take three 20 megahertz channels, and with that can uh, reach these amazing speeds. Very good. And, and then with the demonstration you guys are doing, it's on basically stock uh, Samsung devices, is that correct? It's basically, you know, nothing besides a software update, obviously, but nothing beyond that for the devices? Yeah, that's correct. We have three devices available today. And there were several people from the press and media here. You know, and they were able to pick the devices up to do the tests. We had a Galaxy S7, an S7 Edge, and the uh, Note 7 as well. So those, again, were all production devices on the production network. Um, to your point, there is software that will come in the near future. We'll enable that for all the customers. There's no customer interface that really has to occur other than a normal maintenance release kind of upload for software. Um, but soon they'll be able to experience that on the Sprint network uh, across many, many areas. And what it brings then is uh, not only higher speeds, but it brings more capacity to our network. More capacity means better reliability and then also higher throughput speed. So all in all, it's great news for our customers and an important step for LTE+. Plus. Very good. And I guess for the network itself, what was involved in terms of going from a two-channel uh, two carrier aggregation to a three-channel? Was it a software update or what was required of the actual uh, network equipment there? Sure, from a Samsung perspective, it's a software upgrade in the network. You know, it's great for us to partner with Sprint. We've got such spectrum depth, especially in the 2.5 band. To be able to take advantage of that in the 2.5 network, with a simple software uh, rollout across the network to enable this capability, uh, it's, it's a great use of their spectrum and their network in a very efficient way. And uh, that is the beauty of it. Uh, we have the spectrum available. And with the capability of our partner to turn it on on the base stations, it's a software upgrade and nothing more for us. Got it. Yeah, and I know you guys have got the tooth carrier uh, channel aggregation. I think in over a couple hundred markets at this point are working out on LTE+. Plus. Um, I'm guessing in the commercial uh, deployment for the three-channel uh, three carrier aggregation, uh, is there a timeline yet for how that's going to roll out? Obviously, it's in Chicago today. Uh, what's the plan for the rollout of that? No, there, there's no strict timeline. We will now continue to work. Okay. and uh, roll out as we go. And um, we, we uh, also will adjust it to the places where we need it, where we see demand for it. That makes sense. And again, too, and now, now what's unique about the Sprint network is it's a, you guys are using the TDD LTE, LTE technology as opposed to FTD. And so obviously you guys can really uh, almost, if you wanted to use all 60 megahertz uh, in either uplink or downlink, theoretically, I know you, it's hard to do that, but uh, I guess can you talk a bit about the advantages of, of the fact that you guys are running a TDD uh, LTE network as opposed to a lot of the other networks out there that are FTD based? Yes, so uh, I think that is an important aspect uh, that 
FTD is always 50% downlink, 50% uplink. TDD is flexible. You can define the uplink downlink ratio. And I think that will be a great asset for us in the future because uh, the customer behavior is not symmetrical. Customers use a lot more downlink than uplink, and we can adjust to that. And we will over time. And um, so that is another great thing we have. The TDLT offers that kind of functionality as a standard. Yeah, and it seems like as, as video, well, as streaming video becomes more and more popular out there with consumers, that's one of the benefits, it seems like, with TDDs. You guys could, uh, you know, uh, put more of the assets towards the downlink uh, and support more of that streaming video for HD streaming video and things like that as well. Yes, that, that was one of the applications we used here. We uh, demonstrated 4K video streaming here. And we, did, uh, we went one step further and looked a little bit into the future. And we're also demonstrating the use of the LTE Plus network to, live, uh, to stream uh, virtual reality uh, with Samsung here. Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, as you think about the reasons for needing more spectrum and more capacity and more bandwidth in your network, um, VR is a great example of that. You know, over time, it's been demonstrated you add more capacity to your network, there's pent up demand that people do. And I think virtual reality and 4K streaming is a good example of this question why do you need so much bandwidth? The devices are there, there's the demand is there. You know, as you think about gaming and into the future with virtual reality, I think it's going to be a huge hit. Um, and so I don't think there's going to be any question. The bandwidth demand will certainly be there. Got it. Yeah. And was, this seems to also feed in. I know Sprint has been doing some work lately as well in terms of 5G. I know there were some uh, trials you guys are doing uh, during the recent soccer tournament in the U.S. here. Uh, I guess, how does this play into kind of Sprint's future moving towards what will be, you know, whatever 5G is going to be? But uh, as you guys move towards that, how important is this, you know, kind of making this, uh, this additional step there? So th this is really important because what it does is uh, the, the building blocks, the major building blocks of 5G will be uh, high band spectrum. And that's what we are using. We're using the 2.5, which is a high band spectrum. And we'll be about carry aggregation of different uh, spectral blocks. And th that's the second thing we are doing. So I believe this is a really important building block. Another important building block is the densification strategy we have that we are currently rolling out with partners like Samsung. And uh, both things together, I think, make our network, make our LTE Plus network very, very future-proof for 5G. Very interesting. Very good. And just a, a quick recap. So the, the trial there in Chicago, it's, uh, it's 500 cell sites you guys have upgraded. Is that correct? 500, exactly. Okay, very good. And obviously, that's a, a, pretty, a pretty big amount of coverage, I'm guessing, too. I'm sure it's not just a downtown area. It seems like no. the cell sites is pretty, pretty extensive. It, it is pretty expensive uh, across Chicago. And uh, we, we are very proud that we could do that so fast with the help of our partner here. And we will use... Uh, the, the knowledge we gain here to, to fine tune the network in the other cities of the US. That makes sense. Well, great. Well, hey, Gunter, we definitely appreciate the insight. Obviously, it's always good to catch up. And again, another big uh, accomplishment there for Sprint, kind of moving down this road towards uh, using more and more spectrum. Obviously, the 2.5 band you guys have, you have a lot of spectrum there. So, another good step there. And obviously, good to work with Samsung on that as well. So, definitely appreciate the, catching up on that. Thanks so much for the time today. Yeah, exactly. And you know, uh, as you said, we have a lot of spectrum. The 2.5, we have a treasure chest of spectrum there. So I can promise you, you ain't seen nothing yet. We will continue on that road and that journey. Thank you very much. Very good. Thanks so much, guys, for the time today. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for watching this week's show. And make sure to check us out again next week when we are scheduled to speak with Huawei about utilizing hybrid network approaches to increase rural access to broadband. Thanks for watching.